Hey, welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to talk about the second most powerful force in the universe, the electromagnetic force. And some of us who study electromagnetism have learned of the equation Coulomb's law that the force between any two charges is equal to the product of the charges times a constant k divided by the distance between them squared. For example, if we take two protons and put them side by side, we can measure the, or at least calculate, I don't think we can measure because it's too small, but we can calculate the force of repulsion between those two because they're both positively charged. Like charges, attract, uh, like charges repel, opposite charges attract, so they will at repel each other. And the question is, what will be the force of the repulsion? Knowing that the distance between them is about 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is about the diameter of a single proton. And that, of course, that w would mean that the distance is from center to center. Now, also notice that k can be expressed as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught is considered the permittivity of free space, known as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. Also, what's interesting is that we have the permeability of free space, which governs the, the magnetic interaction between charges and if we take the product between the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space and we take the square root of that and then we take the inverse we get the speed of light something that Maxwell discovered and a tremendous discovery the speed of light is actually determined by the permittivity and the permeability of free space and those those are constants end up appearing in some of the equations that we use for the electromagnetic force of course that should not be a surprise to us now for the interest for a feel of how strong the forces are, let's calculate the force between two protons. And keeping in mind that two protons are very tiny, just imagine how many protons you need to come up with one gram of matter. Remember, you need Avogadro's number. And if you remember that Avogadro's number, n sub a, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we have this many protons, you end up with one gram of protons very small amount of matter and yet the force between two protons put side by side let's figure out what that is equal to so using coulomb's law the force is equal to k which is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per kilogram squared multiply that times the uh where are we um okay there the product of the charges the charge of a single uh, proton or single electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and since we have to multiply the two it's like squaring that divided by the distance between them squared which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters and we have to square that so let's see what is the force between two protons all right so we have 9 e to the 9th times 1.6 e to the 19 minus we square that divided by 1.2 e to the 15 minus and we square that as well and that's 160 newtons imagine that that's equal to 160 newtons wow for those who are not familiar with what 160 newtons is let's convert that to pounds and so convert that to pounds you have to divide by 9.8 and multiply times 2.2 and we get about 36 pounds of force. That is absolutely amazing. Imagine two tiny little protons, unimaginably small, pushed together side by side, will repel each other with a force of 36 pounds. That's an incredible amount of force. Hmm. There's another really nice analogy I like to use to indicate how strong the electromagnetic force really is. And of course, anyone that's ever had experienced a shock from putting their fingers in the socket or something like that you can imagine or or touching a wire that had the insulation frayed and the electricity came out of it the, the charges came out of it you can get quite a jolt from the, those charges so let's let's do a little experiment let's say that we have um, let's say this is the earth right here and what we're going to do is we're going to take one gram of hydrogen and of course, if you remember a gram of hydrogen, that would, that would be Avogadro's number of atoms of hydrogen. And a hydrogen is made up of a single proton and a single electron that zips around the proton. So let's say we take one gram of hydrogen, which is this many atoms of hydrogen, and we take two little boxes. And let's say that those boxes have lids on them that we can open and close very quickly. And so we're going to take each, pro, each atom, and we, we're going to take the electron, 
when let's take some small tweezers we pluck the electron away stick it in the little box take the proton stick it in the other box and then we take the next atom we keep doing that experiment you take the electron put it in the box proton in the box and we keep doing that until we put this many electrons in one box and this many electrons in the other box now of course that would be impossible to do but it's a nice little experiment to think about so now after we've done that you'll have Avogadro's number of protons on one side and Avogadro's number of electrons on the other side. Imagine if the force between two protons is 36 pounds of force or 160 newtons. Imagine what the force would be inside the little box if you filled it with one gram of, of protons, meaning this many protons. Of course, you'd imagine that box would have long ago exploded into smithereens. But now let's say that we take this one box full of protons and put it on one side of the Earth. And let's say we took the box of electrons and we placed it on the other side of the Earth. And let's imagine then that the distance between them is about 8,000 miles or 2 times 6,378 kilometers because that's the radius of the Earth in kilometers. So that's roughly about 4,000 miles or 8,000 miles for the complete diameter. So now those two boxes are 8,000 miles apart. And of course, they would still be attracting one another because you have a positive charge attracting a negative charge. What would be the force of attraction between those two boxes? Hmm. Well, using the same equation, we instead of having a distance like this between two protons next to each other, we would put 8,000 miles or twice 6,378 kilometers. And then, of course, instead of a single charge for a single proton, we would put Avogadro's number of protons. Now one coulomb of charge one coulomb is equal to the charge of uh, 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons or protons whichever you want to use because electrons would be negative charge and protons would be positive charge but that's how many protons make up one coulomb which is the inverse of 1 over 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. so you can see that uh, Avogadro's number is roughly a hundred thousand times bigger than this number. 10 to the 23rd is, is 10 to the 5th bigger than 10 to the 18th and 6.02 is about the same size as 6.25. So that means each little box would have 100,000 coulombs of force, uh, not force but charge, 100,000 coulombs of charge after we do that. You can imagine it would be very difficult to put 100,000 coulombs of charge in a single box. Not very feasible but let's say we could do that what would be the force between them well let me get a different color here and i need a little bit of room so let me put over here so the force would be equal to k 9 times 10 to the 9th times the charge squared so that would be 100,000 coulombs squared divided by the distance between them that would be um, if we double this number that gives us 12,700 and 56, 12,756, let me check that again, that would be 600, 750, 756, yep, and then we need three more zeros because we had to convert that to meters, and then we would have to square that. So, let's find out what would be the force between those two boxes, and remember, one gram, it's 128th of an ounce, a very small amount of hydrogen separated the protons from the electrons. All right, so we have 9e to the 9th times 100,000 squared divided by 12,756,000 squared equals, let me convert that to scientific notation, 550,000 newtons. Newtons. And, um, hmm. If we divide, divide by 9.8 and times 2.2, we get 125,000 roughly, about 125,000 pounds. Imagine one gram of hydrogen, separate the electrons from the protons, separate the two boxes by 8,000 miles, more than 12,000 kilometers, and the force of attraction between them would be 125,000 pounds or a half a million newtons. An incredible amount of force for a small amount of charge. Imagine the charge you could put into a very small volume, yet the force of attraction would be just absolutely enormous. So that should give you an appreciation of the strength 
of the electromagnetic force. And yet, the nuclear strong force is more than 100 times as strong. It needs to be in order to keep the nuclei together. If the nuclear strong force wasn't that strong, it could simply not overpower the repulsive force of the protons inside the nucleus of atoms, and atoms couldn't exist. So it's an incredible universe, an incredible world, world with incredible forces governing the properties of these particles and how they interact with each other. So now we've understood, hopefully, the electromagnetic force. Now on to the next one.